Dear friends, as a pastor and a parent and a Kenyan, I am very disheartened these last two days of what I've read in the social media. Yesterday there was a lot of hula baloo about girls who have gotten pregnant since schools were closed due to COVID-19. There are some counties that are counting 4,000 girls. There are some counties that are counting up to 17,000, 18,000, 12,000, 10,000, 8,000 girls who have fallen pregnant and these are school going girls. And uh, the report says that some of the people that have caused these pregnancies on these girls are mostly relatives and their fellow age mates. This is because these girls have been idle. I may not want to lay all the blame on the girls for getting pregnant, but they are the culprits who are the men that have been involved in impregnating these girls. In just three months since schools were ordered closed, these are the results we are seeing. When schools open, if this trend continues, how many girls are going to come back to school? Yesterday I also watched a very saddening clip on, that was doing the rounds on WhatsApp about this boy who has been um, apprehended by people in the neighborhood for stealing from people. He says he's in Form 2 and they're stealing with some other three boys. And then he says they're taking the phones to another Form 4 boy in the committee area. And uh, if you read through the social media, a policeman wrote an article that was doing the circulation that what they are really gra grappling with right now and dealing with is petty crime that is performed by children who are below age. They are full in their cells. They are being arrested every day. And at this rate, I don't know whether we have a generation that is coming after us. Where do I want to lay the blame exactly? I want to talk to parents right now. What do you speak to your children about? Do you speak to your teenagers about sex? I have, I have an 8-year-old boy, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and I have a 15-year-old daughter. And I talk to my children. I always want to know who are their friends, who do they associate with, and what do they discuss. Sometimes we are very keen on how they use their phones. But most parents, we are only crying that, oh, the government is not opening schools, or oh, we are fed up with this government. But now, most parents do not want to stay with their children because they do not know what to talk to their children about. They do not know how to handle their children. And that is why we are having this kind of a problem that is we are having today. I am seeing, if parents are not careful, we are going to lose a whole generation. The Bible is very explicit about what a parent should do. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 to 9, the Bible expressly lays the mandate of teaching children to the parent. More so fathers. We are having a big problem with absentee fathers. Fathers who are there, but they are not there. Others who come home late. Others, who, And I know this particular time, we know everybody is bogged down with trying to make ends meet. Some people are trying, people have lost their jobs, people are on a half salary, others are on quarter salary, others have been told to stay home until they are cold and they have children to feed. So most people are out there looking for money. But then, at what expense should we look for money and forget about the welfare of our children? Every parent should worry about where their children go. I live in an inner city estate and uh, when we are just almost coming to the time of curfew that is when you see boys escorting girls where have they been they pass outside my the gate my gate in twos escorting each other and and and, and you see some are coming from the south others are coming from the north from all centers and these girls are school girls and parents are at home most parents are at home at this particular time what are you doing When your child comes home, she's been away since morning, or she comes back home just before curfew, you don't even bother to ask where they have been, 
Where have you been? Who have you been with? What were you doing? I know they may not tell you, but a kin parent, you can be able to read your children like a book. We must take personal responsibility of what happens to our children. In fact, the teachers were doing a better job. That's why most people are commending teachers. That's why most people want children to go back to school because the teachers are able to discipline the kids. But us, we pamper them. We don't want to ask them. We are afraid. Some kids are, uh, are telling parents, if you continue asking me, if you tell me not to talk to that boy, I'll commit suicide. I normally say this like a friend of mine once said. Even if I know that my daughter will commit suicide because I refuse her to work with a particular boy, then be it. I would rather she commit suicide than messing up her life. We need to be very careful on how we handle our children. The Bible says that children are a heritage from God. And blessed is a man whose quiver is full. That does not mean that you're only blessed because you have children. One of the things that God allowed us to have children is to be procre procreators together with him. We are co-creators with him. We are creating other human beings. And we are supposed to bring these children up in the ways of the Lord. But most of us keep saying they are small. They'll chat their own way. As long as a child is living under your roof. I learned this from my father. He used to say, under my roof, under my rules. If you want to have your own rules, set of rules to go by, then you need to find your own house. And he kept reminding us that. So even when we became adults and we started staying alone after high school and college and everything, we were able to be responsible people because our parents were able to teach us that. So if you are a parent, this is my plea. Take your time and sit down with your child. The figures that are being branded around as girls who are pregnant, as many as are of thousands of girls who are pregnant, the culprits are as many, and they are also boys. Your son, if you have a son, your son may not get pregnant, but your son may make another person's daughter pregnant. Because all these we are hearing, uh, counties, 18,000 per county, 17,000 in another county, 12,000 in another county, 4,000, 3,000 in another county, all these pregnancies are respons responsibilities of the male, the boy child. If we, if we only take a lot of time looking at the girls and forgetting the boys who are the culprits, then we have no generation that is coming. I want to rest my case by reminding us we have a very, very big responsibility of our children and God will ask us to give an account on the judgment day. I allowed you, I gave you children as a gift. You, what did you do? with their upbringing did you bring them up in godly ways did you talk to your children there's there's nothing so fearful about talking to your children about sex after all they know so much you just need to find out what they have learned in school and augment as a parent there'll be some things they have learned even from their friends that are not right it is your responsibility to correct the wrong that they have learned you cannot shy away from teaching your children who do you want you've thrown your children to schools when schools are not on, you've thrown them to your pastors because you want your pastors to teach your children for you. How many hours do I spend with your children on a Sunday morning? How many hours do the, do the teachers spend with your children? They spend so much hours, but they are bogged down with the curriculum. Even right now, some of us are, are, are pushing our teachers to, to teach our children online. Our teachers are also, are also parents. They are grappling with the COVID-19. They don't know what to do. They want to contain their children. They want to stay safe. But we are there making so much noise that why are they not teaching our children online? In fact, if I was a ministry of education, uh, I was working, I would, I would have abolished the online classes. And then when students go back, they start from where they left off. Because parents have a responsibility. Even when the teachers are teaching online, do you even check what they are learning? Some of them, you give them data. As the teachers are teaching online, then they are engaging in discussions with other people online. We need to be very serious as parents. I rest my case and I pray that you have heard me. In Jesus' name, amen.